Noto is a virgin nerd loser who is terrible at everything and can't even look at girls in the eyes without shaking like a leaf just like you. However, his life suddenly changes when a short girl bullies him into falling in love with her. This all started when he enters the library to do his usual loser activities, but there are women in the vicinity, and he hates them because they're loud and annoying. Most importantly, they make fun of him for being a clumsy idiot, who can't even stay calm when they're five feet away from him. When he accidentally drops his drawings, one of the girls picks it up and tells everyone that he's drawing hentai. Upon reading his stills, Pai Asse introduces herself and calls him Senpai but not before roasting him and his manga plot, because apparently, he's trying to do a self-insert into his story. And he's not even close to being cool, because he can't do what the character can in his story. So to prove that he's a coward, she asks him to reenact the scenes in the manga together. However, when it's finally time to be cool, he just can't because he's idiot maxing. This leads to her cooking him so hard, he actually starts crying. Before leaving his sorry ass that night, he gets pulled again by the light-skinned demon Hayase, which continues the next day, when she actually finds where he's hiding. Before entering the room, he returns her handkerchief and tells her he washed it, which makes her blush. She follows him inside and teases him that they're alone together, which means plot development. Looking around, she realizes that he's doing some art, so she offers to be his model, unbuttoning her shirt so he can draw better and he just explodes comically, telling her to be normal instead. When he actually starts drawing, he keeps looking at her, making absolutely nothing on the canvas. She catches on to this, so she promises to reward him if he can actually do something other than stare at her. And so he gets to work and starts drawing her, which takes in the entire day, but it's actually pretty damn good, even she is impressed. As promised, she gives him his reward, telling him to close his eyes as he's about to get it. She leans in closer, going for a kiss, but as soon as their lips are about to touch, I'm gonna come. Oh. She flicks his nose and laughs at his pathetic. <laughs> she roasts him again, telling him he's too optimistic if he thinks he can actually get a kiss from just that. She calls him a twink for not drawing her thigh area, bullying him again into crying. <laughs> After that, she follows him around and asks him to go out with her, which of course is another joke, and he keeps falling for that. He tells her she's just toying with him for the fun of it. So she sends him barreling down a canal, which he doesn't find too offensive. He just gets out of it and tells her it's no big deal, despite his clothes all ruined and soaked. So she asks him if he ever gets angry, because she's aware she's basically worse than his bullies. Unfortunately, Noto isn't the type of guy to get angry very often, and instead just lets his haters leave as soon as they're done with him. He tells her that despite her bullying, he actually doesn't hate it. In fact, he's got a bullying kink, and he likes it a lot, but he doesn't even know her name, so he asks her about it. Hayase tells him to call her the N-word Nagatoro, writing it down on his chest. The next day, Noto is finally alone in the art room, and he can't wait to read the manga he bought from Wish. But his hand-to-hand -hand session is interrupted when Hayase appears once again to disturb the peace, so he immediately hides the manga behind his back. However, she has some kind of creep detector and knows he's up to something, eventually catching onto his plan. She offers to do it together with her, lowering his guard, before taking the manga for herself. She pats him for trying to get laid, but tells him there's no way he's gonna take the easy route with her. Once she opens the manga, she's immediately greeted with large anime honkers, which according to him, is very relevant to the plot. So she shows him one panel and compares it to him, roasting him for thinking that he can actually pull something like that. But in Noda's defense, he just wants to read the story because it's a vampire story about true love. So she reads the manga and actually finds it very compelling, despite the jump scares. <laughs> she even tells him one of the characters resembles him, which is that poor sod who gets sucked dry. But she tells him he'll do just fine because vampires don't actually feed on a virgin's blood. He's had enough of her, so he asks her how she knows he's a virgin, so she challenges him. She then looks at his neck and asks him if she can bite it, like the vampire in the story. She tells him it's just like a prick, and it wouldn't be painful, despite her canine teeth built like a pit bull. She inches closer before lunging at him like a hunter from Left 4 Dead, telling him that he's her prey now. I don't blame you. Damn good deal. He asks her what will happen if someone sees them, but she ignores it and starts harassing him, stroking his neck like a rod. Oh my god! Wow! Before leaning in closer for a big bite. However, his breath smells like a dead rat. 
but doesn't stop her from lunging at him and rubbing a good one. Later that day, she follows him on the way home and asks him if it's his first time getting handy. Noto gets flustered and is beat red, especially since this is actually the first time a woman touches him on his other head. So she asks him if he wants another one, and she'll do it properly this time, edging him because she goes for his belly instead of Lil Bro. She laughs at him again for thinking he'll get another one, before leaving him all edged up and hard. That night, while reading hentai, he imagines Hayase giving him all that plot development, which actually gets him tweaking. The next day, she appears once again to annoy him, but this time around, they're gonna be playing the melon guessing game. The rule is simple, he just needs to guess where the seeds are located, and the prize is pretty much self-explanatory. He tells her he's not into groping people randomly and there's no merit to winning, but she tells him there it is and it's a ticket to ask her to do anything. He can basically use the ticket as a red card to stop her from annoying or bullying him. But he can also use the ticket to do even crazy stuff, like getting her to wear her swimwear or strip down her clothes. He thinks really hard and tells himself he'll do it so he can stop her from bullying him. And so the game begins and Hayase opens up with a double bullseye, hitting the targets expertly. Which is actually a miss, but before he can say anything, she just starts playing with it like a Roomba going in circles. He begs for her to stop and tells her he's giving up, but she tells him it's now his turn to do the thing. Determined to get his revenge, he closes the gap and starts locking in at his targets. As he's about to touch her like switches, she pushes him off of her and tells him time's up, ditching him for her friends. After taking a massive L, he goes to a restaurant to continue working on his manga. But Hayase and her friends, along with some guys, just entered the restaurant. Apparently it's a double date and he's trying to listen to what they're up to. The guys are basically waffling about things like band and all that jazz, but Hayase doesn't give a damn about it. The guide even offers her to listen to one of his dumpster fire music. Meanwhile, our boy is just hiding from a corner, waiting for her to trash the guy and his garbage music. But for some reason, she doesn't and just straight up tells him he should stop making music. Even the second guy gets humiliated so badly that he has to go back to the bathroom for the second time. On the way home, Noto thinks about whether he's the only one getting bullied, because the guys earlier were straight up destroyed mentally, but she appears behind him and starts walking with him, which ends up in more bullying. The next day, she appears in the art room again and asks him if he wants her to model for him. But he refuses, stating that he only wants to draw things instead of real people. So she undresses and shows him something he's never seen before. A school swimsuit. After their school, heavy rain starts pouring in and both of them have to run to the nearest shed. Under it, they try to dry themselves, but the rain starts pouring harder, so she invites him to dry his clothes at her house. Upon seeing her parents' shoes, he thinks he's gonna get roasted by his family, including the cat, but it turns out, no one is home right now. She tells him to stay for a bit, offering her brother's clothes while she dries his, even giving him a towel to use. Instead of using the towel normally, he thinks to himself, it's the same towel that she used to dry every nook and cranny of her body. It's like it's not because she already knows he's gonna sniff it like a crack addict. After drying himself, she brews some tea for both of them teasing him again that he's acting twice as sus since he got inside their house. She knows it's his first time being in a girl's room, so she asks him what's the most common thing that two people do inside a room, and he tells her it's studying. But she catches on to him because they don't even have exams coming up. She then puts her hand on top of his, telling him they're gonna smash like crazy, like smash the video game. She tells him that it's her brother and that she's pretty elite at the game, but he just trashes her with his insane Evo moment 37 which genuinely annoys her. He thinks he's too hard on her, but after all the bullying, he's finally gonna get his revenge. And so the next round, he just trashes her as usual, but as he's about to finish her, she blows his ears, and he immediately loses focus, losing the game. The two play the game the entire time and once the rain stops, he thanks her for the good time and she tells him there won't be a next time. The next day, Naoto finds himself in trouble because most of the seats in the cafeteria are occupied, except for Hayase and her friends. She invites him over, but this is literally hell for him, because these are the same girls who laughed at his drawings a couple of days ago. Since now the spots are open, he just takes it like a man, but she pretends they're in a relationship. So the girls ask him if he expanded her domain already, but he's got the heavenly restriction aka he's a virgin, so it's become obvious he isn't her boyfriend. She's so possessive of him that the girls think he got reversed colonized. Then he gets bullied again with Mackie telling him that he's less than a human, he's just a bug. 
But much to his surprise, Hayase defends him because Maki is taking it too far with all the strays that he's catching. Even he stands up for himself and announces to the whole cafeteria that he's not her boyfriend, cutting off mid-sentence to finally eat his lunch, which makes girls laugh at him with his victim rees. Later that day, Hayase asks him why he never fights back, telling him that he should bitch slap someone whenever they diss him. So they reenact what he should be doing, but instead of slapping her, he just cries like a pathetic loser, which leads her to bully him even further. Once he's had enough, however, he actually slaps her hard, but on the wrong cheeks. A couple of days later, while enjoying his lunch, Maki and Yoshi appear to disturb his peace. He thinks it's Hayase, but it's the worst people he wants to see right now. They finally find their hideout and they start bullying him again, getting smugly stared while eating. Then suddenly, they have the brightest idea to talk about melons and what makes them great, asking him if he actually touched one before. Apparently, some rumors are spreading that he's a virgin and a closeted cultured man. So to cure this disease he has, Mackie asks him if he wants to feel her spherical pillows, hypnotizing him like he's Alex Mason. Before things go south, he immediately heads for the doorway, but Yoshi grabs him and forces him to touch Mackie's buns. But in reality, it's actually a red bean bun and not the real thing, which is a total disappointment. They laugh at him again, but Hayase finally appears, looking all pissed and ready to throw hands. So the duo retreats, and she congratulates him, menacingly for losing his hand's virginity. But when he tells her it's not really the real thing, but the bread, she has the brightest idea of doing the same thing. She offers him that she'll let him squeeze her black bean buns, rewarding him with a premium bean bun if he correctly guesses which buns are softer. After tucking the two breads inside her shirt, she asks him to feel them and check which one has the softer texture. He's hesitant to actually do it, but she tells him he's a coward if he can't do it. So, he slowly touches the right one, closes his eyes, and does some quick massage. While he's doing it, the premium button slips out of her shirt. So when he actually goes for the left one, My time has come. He's feeling the actual thing. He doesn't even hold back and feels around the entire thing, with both hands, just to make sure it's the premium bun. Once he opens his eyes, he immediately tells her which is the premium bun, but he quickly realizes that he's basically going to prison for groping her. So, Hayase resorts to domestic violence and beats him up with the premium bread. Two days later, things go back to normal, and she volunteers to be his model, bringing a used sofa into the art room to be her personal bed. She mentions how he looks a little bit sad when she enters the room and notices that he is looking at the baseball captain who is celebrated by his team and some of their schoolmates. He opens up about how he's not really good at anything, except drawing stuff, so being praised certainly helps boost his confidence. But she tells him that to receive praises means to acknowledge and praise someone else first. So, she asks him to praise her and give compliments, anything will do. But when he thinks about it, anything he says can be labeled as creepy, so he praises her hair instead. She laughs at his goofiness, but asks for more praises, so he tells her she's quite agile, and what he did the first time they met was pretty badass. In return, she praises him but not before judging him to see if there's actually anything worth mentioning about him. After that, they start their modeling sequence and she tries multiple poses, which are all quite provocative and too much for his virgin to handle. In the end, they settle for the normal looking one, but he can't even draw properly without being hard at work. So she tells him she'll be taking a nap instead while he's working on his drawing skills. When she's finally asleep, he finally gets the good position to draw her, which turns out to be a pretty damn good sketch. When she wakes up, she takes a look at the drawing and gives him a reward, which is a Frenchie with a damn toy. Emotional damage! After a week of hanging out and getting bullied, things are getting a little bit better because Hayase is starting to get more touchy. When she challenges him to a tickle fight, Chato accepts but chickens out when she reveals her school swimsuit uniform. She urges him to tickle her Cadbury armpits if he's a real man, but she also chickens out when he's so close to that galaxy chocolate spot. Later that day, she shows him a reel about a sheep getting sheared and realizes that his hair looks like it can do a little shearing. He tells her he'll go to the barber shop, but she can no longer wait and brings out her brother's shaver. He squirms and says he doesn't get his hair cut so short that the barber needs a shaver, so she settles for haircutting scissors and a comb. At first, he's hesitant and tells her it's a lot of work, but after some delusional thoughts, he gives in and tells her to cut his hair. However, Mikey calls her and tells her to send her notes to their classroom, which is a ploy to get her out of the room, so they can cut Nyoto's hair instead. A few seconds later, 
Maki and Yoshi enter the room, looking around before finding the shaver. They ask him what's up with it, so he tells them Hayase's plan for his hair, which gives them the idea of giving him a fate worse than death. For the second time, the duo bullies him again, opting to give him the baldy which activates his defense mechanism. Just as they're about to finish his hair off, Hayase arrives to rescue him, and the duo, as usual, ditch them again. After some time, she finishes her haircut, and it turns out really great for Noodo. For once, he does not look like a breedable twink from a Target cash registry. Two days later, the summer officially starts and everyone's getting harassed by the sun. On the way to school, Hayase asks Naoto to buy shaved ice with her, but when they arrive, they see that the line is longer than the lines on the iPhone 15 launch day. However, she's really craving some shaved ice, and no amount of human lines can deter her from getting that delicious summer treat. The problem is the line doesn't even budge, even after queuing for four hours. She's running low on power and is about to collapse from heat stroke, so our boy drags her somewhere she doesn't absorb all the heat. After giving her rat poison, she yields back to 100% and she's ready to line up again, but tells him to wait for a bit because she's gonna cook something. After a few minutes, she arrives with a pure mustard ice cream, enjoying the best flavors Japan can offer. Later that day, she tells him that summer break starts tomorrow and she's basically going to be preoccupied with helping her club, so she asks for his contact info. After getting his number, she tells him she's gonna cyberbully him, so better be prepared. A month has passed by in the blink of an eye and Naoto finds himself inside the Genshin Impact loading screen. This fitted lady tells her he's the savior of the world, so he gotta do some world saving, plunging him straight into the map without a glider. As soon as he drops, a monster attacks him and his magical powers are completely useless, until the catcherl Hayase shows up as Nekatoro, sending the beast straight to Poseidon's lunchbox. And so their adventurer starts and they beat up a lot of monsters, eventually finding the Demon Lord's lair, which is his original quest. Turns out, she and the girls he saved are all Demon Lords in disguise and are just waiting for him to deliver them straight into their castle. Just as he's about to get bullied again, he wakes up and finds the real demons waiting for him to wake up. The next day, Hayase invites him to join them at the beach, as it's going to be the last day of their summer vacation. He initially refuses, but goes on anyway, because he knows how much of a loser he is, so he plans to actually have some fun. On the way to the beach, he gets bullied by the trio, dissing him for being a lummer sea lice. Once they arrive, Maki removes her t-shirt, revealing her bountiful peaks, and catches that he's looking at her. Yoshi proceeds to FNAF to jump scare him with her freshest melons, which forces him to leave the area. When he brings the drinks, the girls prepare to have the most fun of their life, while he sits underneath their summer umbrella, trying to finish his drawings before the summer actually comes to an end. After some time, Hayase notices how lonely he is, so she walks up to him and tells him to put on some creamy white liquid all over his body, so he can resist the sun. However, when she's about to give him some sunscreen, he stops her and tells her that she can only be gentle with him if they're dating. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Hearing this ridiculous thing, she just stomps him and gives him a foot <laughs> Then the girls join in the fun, giving him a triple foot <laughs> leaving him full of sunscreen enough to replace the ozone layer. So that was a f***ing lie. Throughout the day, the group spends their last day of summer vacation quite well and even Naoto admits that it's really fun. With the summer vacation coming to an end, it's finally time for a summer festival to end, and everyone is dressed up for summer fireworks later tonight. In his mind, Noodo wants to be with Hayase, all dressed up with her summer yukata, but he ends up just spending his time playing whack Tekken game. But he can't keep still because he is really waiting for her text to invite him, just like the last time at the beach. Though he contemplates whether he should be inviting her to come with her, because that sounds really creepy even to him. So after two hours, he just comes in solo but Yoshi and Maki find him again, kidnapping him and making fun of him for thinking they'll actually run into Hayase. Apparently she's busy helping her club, so she can't really join the festival. Upon hearing this, he opts to leave however the girls collared him, so he can't leave. Then they sent the pick to Hayase, making sure to lure her into the festival. A few minutes later, she arrives and tries to take the leash off of Maki, but she tells her that she'll have to fight for Noodo's ownership. With the rules established, the two groups start fighting over the minigame stalls around them. Two hours pass in the blink of an eye and they compare the prizes they'd won, with Hayase taking Naoto's ownership deed through bribery. With the games done, Yoshi and Maki go off to do their own things, leaving the two alone. After some time, they look around, buying food here and there, teasing our boy that it's like a date. 
Fireworks soon illuminates the skies and high assay pushes him to the designated viewing spot. However, just like the shaved ice cream line, even watching fireworks is a drag. Noto tells her they'll take a shortcut, but the line suddenly moves and she's dragged along with it. So he has no choice but to pull her out and drag her to the best viewing spot in their city. She then ruins the moment by making fun of him once again, but this time he's got the clap back, forcing her to omit every detail of what she thinks is going to happen if they're alone in a dark place. Then suddenly, a big firework reveals couples around them doing the exact thing that she's about to do, so they immediately retreat to civilization. On the way home, he tells her to come with her next year, and surprisingly she agrees, telling him that he'll have to wear matching yukatas with her. On the way to school the next day, he spots Hayase along with her friends. As usual, they're up to some stupid stuff again, but a couple of guys join in the fun. And he gets jealous, so he observes what they're up to, and unsurprisingly, they sort of get along with the girls effortlessly. Unlike his wimpy these guys are in a different league, and he's just a mole in a world full of furries. When one of the guys puts his arms around Hayase, he gets angry and tries to walk tough. But when he steps on a stick, he looks like he alerted the horde. Maki and Yoshi recognize him and invite him to their table. The guys ask him what he wants, and he hesitates a bit, before telling Hayase that he bought her for two elixirs, and that they're leaving. And just like that, he bags four in one go, leaving the blind freaks holeless. And then he gets bullied again, but he actually likes it at this point, so it doesn't matter anymore. While hanging out with Naoto, Hayase notices how thin his arms are and tells him how thin his arms are, so decides that she's going to train him for free. She tells him that in two months, they'll be able to beat up anyone who bullies him, including her. But he says it's too much work, especially for someone like him, who can only lift pencils instead of weights. There's an exception, though, for an exercise that doesn't need any movement. So she tells him to get on all fours because she's going to peg his triceps into that of Kratos. Once he's on the floor, she sits on his back and tells him to hold his position for 10 minutes without getting hard or else he's going to get crushed. But for some reason he gets even harder than before because she's basically edging him to whatever this exercise is. When a group of students sees what's happening though, they get embarrassed and stop doing their role play. Later that day, she asks him if he has any plans to actually study, because their midterms are coming up. He confidently tells her that he'll do just fine because he's not an idiot. But she tells him that if he's too confident, he might repeat a grade which means they'll be in the same grade. And if it continues eventually, she'll become the senpai, and that means more bullying is coming his way. So he starts studying really hard, because he doesn't want to be lumped with shit for brains girls. Blondie tells him that they're down bad right now, and they're most likely going to repeat, so Maki and Yoshi ask him to tutor them. All this hard work bears fruit, because he gets a couple of good marks, which means no repeating for him. Later that day, Hayase hears some very sus sounds coming from the art room. When she opens the room, she witnesses Naoto getting harassed by the girls into removing the splinter stuck in his finger. She looks really pissed upon seeing her favorite toy getting toyed with by her friends, so she takes the clip and removes it herself. On the way home, she asks him if he'll play Jankin with her, with the condition that whoever loses will carry the winner's bag. But she immediately loses to him. And now she has to carry his bags home, so the next time, he sets her to win. Just before they're split, they do another one, and he lets her win, this time, carrying her on his back. But walking for a couple of meters on top of carrying both their bags, she starts to slip away from his hand, so he grabs them god, and she immediately runs away. Later that night, he keeps looking at his phone, hoping that she'll call her. But when she does, she starts a video call. He quickly apologizes for what happened, but she tells him it's no big deal, even though they're both embarrassed. A couple of days later, they're both stuck with each other again. While he's drawing some lamp, Hayase's shadow boxing like Ippo, and she's really into it. She asks him to box with him, but since he can't do anything to be a nerd, he just becomes a punching bag for her. Later that day, she and her friends visit the art room to vandalize it, drawing the best pieces of art since Picasso. So when Nato arrives, he asks them what the hell are they doing in his place. Turns out, there's a bunch of sweaty gamers playing Animal Crossing in their usual hangout place, and they can't really make them leave, because they ignore them, so instead, they're crashing the art room. Before leaving, they made sure that they left a plant to create drama and chaos within the group. Then, Maki turns to him, because she believes he's not really a virgin, but is just acting like one, which means he's a fraud, and she's about to cook him. But Hayase tells him that he's a very passionate guy, 
and thinks of plot and workouts all the time. Meki is basically trolling her, but Hayase isn't, so she asks her to place a bet. Basically, if she finds a hentai magazine in the art room, it means that Naoto is the most cultured man of all and Meki will have to buy her pancakes. But after 15 minutes of searching, she can't really find anything, because Naoto strategically hid his magazine in the other room. Given that she looks defeated, however, he sneaks out of the room to fetch his sacred treasure and returns to the room, strategically placing the magazine behind him. He then calls her out, so she can spot the magazine and immediately takes it from him, winning the game. The next day, she visits the art room again, and Naoto notices that she's wearing a new earring. According to her, it's a new one because she recently poked an earring hole, which gives her the idea to prick his hole as well. She believes he'll look good with earrings, telling him that he'll wear a matching earring with her. Of course, he blushes because it's quite romantic. Oh my god! Wow! But his hole needs to be drilled first. So he closes his eyes and prepares his ears to be pegged. But she laughs at him for looking pathetic. A few seconds later, Sakura arrives with tears in her eyes, asking for his help. Apparently, there's a stalker who's been following her for quite some time, and it's the same guy from the gaming club. She tells everyone that she's scared, but Miyoto tells them they did it to themselves, especially with that savage. Sakura starts crying, and the group basically guilt trips him into helping her. With Sakura asking him to pretend to be her boyfriend for a day, just so she can stave off the massive moron she pulled by being manipulative. Hayase is against it and tells them that he's very harmful and too cultured for his own good. Because if she lets her become her boyfriend for a day, she'll have to deal with two creepy stalkers on her rice cakes, which is not a good thing. Still, she asks him to be his boyfriend just for tomorrow, until they can catch the ugly bat. The next day, Naoto dresses up with his best boyfriend fit, with Sakura arriving a few minutes later. Hayase and the gang follow them around to document their date, but she's obviously not having a good time. It doesn't help that Sakura is also being too clingy, while bringing Naoto to a place where he really wants to have a first date with someone. Before they can progress with their relationship, Hayase cuts it off and does a citizen's arrest on the fat weirdo following Sakura, ending their interaction once and for all. The fat dude cow does and apologizes for what he did, swearing he'll never do the same thing to Sakura. Later that day, both Sheet and Naoto go home together, teasing him about his foiled first date thanks to her. But he tells her it's not really a genuine date, since he's just helping out her friend. She tells him that he's not really ready for dates if he's too immature, and thinks about the plot all the time, to which he admits. After a week, their P.E. starts, and as usual, Naoto is a hot mess. He runs like someone who got shot in Detroit, and Hayase is not happy with that. So after school, she tells him that she saw how bad he was during the marathon, teasing him for being weak and pathetic. He admits that he's bad at running, but she tells him that no one is that bad at running, unless you're missing a leg or two. He just needs to practice, but he's too stubborn, yapping about people with talent. And he's just someone who simply doesn't have the talent for running, which she finds insulting. So she tells him that she's going to start training him into a healthy human being. That weekend, he meets with her and he gets flustered, seeing high assays untanned body. And so they start running, but upon seeing how incredibly fit she is, he starts gaining momentum, eventually surpassing her for a hot minute, before she takes over again, leaving him to eat dust. But he's pretty much cooked after running for 5 kilometers straight without resting. But they're not even close to the finish line yet. But she knows he's giving up without giving his all, so she bullies him again, telling him that he's a wimp and coward, and that he doesn't have the guts. Even a grade schooler will beat him, which didn't really help him, because he just ran away back home, which is another 5 kilometers. But apparently it's just a warm-up, and there's more torture for him, because she starts doing some stretches. Then she starts showing him how flexible she is compared to him, asking him to do the same. But when it's finally time to stretch, he can't even move an inch without her help. She then tells him to stand up and starts doing some Dragon Ball Z fusion, which is exactly what Yoshi is thinking when she sees them. The next day, he thinks about his model for his next painting, and as usual, Hayase jump scares him again. With the culture festival coming up, we'll have to make something worth visiting by people and students alike. But right now, he doesn't have a model who isn't bullying him or isn't Hayase. Apparently, he wants to draw guys instead of girls, so she shows him his weird sketch of her last summer break, telling him that she'll report him to the principal if he doesn't pick her. So he agrees, but on the condition that she'll have to provide her own costume, because he doesn't have any cat girl costume lying around. And so the next day, she arrives with almost the same costume, ready to be his model. He thought he actually won for good, 
but this is double dubs for his weird fetish. Hayase's friends arrive, and she tells them that she's modeling for Naoto, but she's gonna be cooking yakisoba in their stall. Everyone shares what they're going to do, except for Naoto, because he doesn't know what he'll actually present. A year ago, he just followed his art club president's direction, but with her missing in action, he'll have to do it himself. The girls cook him as usual, but Hayase tells him they'll be helping him so the art club can actually get some visitors, with all the attractions including his torture. However, he suddenly hears very distinct and familiar footsteps coming from outside. It's the club president. He immediately tells everyone to hide in the other room while he sorts out the mess. President Santa is a strict and stern senior who presides over the art club, and she immediately criticizes the utter mess that is their room. She tells him that aside from the art exhibit, she's here to talk about something. Apparently, some nasty rumors are going around that their art class is becoming a hostess club of some sort, and if he can't take it seriously, she'll have to permanently shut down the art club. But Hayase and her friends overheard what was happening and stopped her from submitting the shutdown form. She recalls all of Neoto's hardships and defends his honor, criticizing Santa's lack of concern for the integrity of the art club, which Neoto kept in her absence. For her to suddenly appear out of nowhere to shut down the club is just a straight-up injustice. Hearing this, Santa tells Neoto that if he's so adamant about keeping his art club going, he'll have to actually present something worthy. So she challenges him to a double art exhibition, and whoever gets the most visitors will win, and if he loses, the art club goes down for good. He's afraid to take on the president, but, but if Hayase assures him they'll do anything they can to help him. Later that day, Hayase and the rest mock the president for her very strict and overly serious attitude. But he tells them not to make fun of Santa, because she's actually very capable and his chances of winning are pretty much zero. Meki tells him they'll just do a cat made cafe, and they'll surely beat her. But he tells them that last year, they won 6th place out of 50 plus contestants. All thanks to Sana, and whatever she's packing between those beaks. On top of that, she's also an ace artist, winning against other high schoolers and even college students. So, Maki asks him what makes her so popular and Naoto unboxes their winning masterpiece, the most revealing self-portrait. She's got that god yacht and everyone's loving it, including him. But with high ass modeling for him, he's already cooked and knows that he's just gonna take the L for this. Besides, he's not really that confident in competing against someone he looks up to, especially given the fact that she's an accomplished artist and he didn't accomplish anything, except for gratuitous yet pleasurable bullying. Even Maki and the rest of the group tell Hayase she's got no boondocks to compete against that Mount Everest president's son is packing. However, Nuoto tells everyone that despite Hayase's lack of meaty buns, she's got the spirit, which doesn't really help their case. They're still going to be defeated no matter what, they bring in the big guns, which is a cat girl cosplay. After school, Hayase asks him if he can really win against Santa's insane art, which is really questionable. But Naoto assures her they're gonna with just Hayase's everyday looks, because that's what sells the most. And so for the next couple of days, he starts painting her, with Hayase posing every now and then. But the problem is, Naoto can't draw properly, especially with all the pressure around him. He tells her that he's not going to drag her name and image, only to be humiliated by other people once he loses the bet. Instead, he's just gonna take the L and call it quits with the art club. She tells him she's not really bothered by what people are going to say, but he insists that it's between him and Santa. The next day, he enters the room and sees that Santa already divided the art club in half, so both of them can focus on their art, and is determined to win, so he picks up his brush and starts practicing. After a few hours of undisturbed painting, he manages to draw something good enough for a house display, but not enough for a cultural festival. The president appears behind and critiques his work, which is terrible at best because it lacks something. When he asks him what he's lacking, she responds that it lacks love and passion, which is the most important thing that an artist can do in his paintings. Hayase arrives a few seconds later and immediately thinks the president is modeling for Nodo, given her choice of clothing. So she freaks out and runs as fast as she can, but the president tells Nodo to run after her because that's what art is. So when he catches up to her, he finally asks him to model for him again recalling all the bullying she did and all the sweet things after all that torture. However, she's being too difficult, telling him to just let the president do it with him because that's pretty much what works. Then she accidentally slips, almost falling into the pool. But he grabs her hand and tells her that he really wants to draw her, just the way she is because it's the most attractive to him. And so the cultural festival is finally here 
and after some rigorous work, Nihoto finally has something to show to the crowd, which is an everyday portrait of Hayase. Meiki notices how he did so well in this painting. It almost seems like it's from his perspective as a boyfriend. Of course, he denies this and tells them he's just trying to show a side of Hayase that looks very attractive. But there's a problem, because they still don't know what the president Sanada painted, so they do some reconnaissance. Hayase asks him if he's not coming to take a look, and he tells her he doesn't want to compare himself to the president and be demoralized after. So she assures him he doesn't need to feel bad because he has a chance of beating the president. But after seeing her piece, she collapses because there's no way in hell she's going to win people over, especially with how insane the president's piece is. According to Maki, last year's piece was insane, but the president doubled down this year and made it even more insane. So she tells everyone to suit up because they're gonna lose so badly if they can't salvage their situation. After finishing their work, Santa asks him about his piece and then tells him she's not going to lose to him, just because he's her underclassman, challenging him to go beyond his limits. Later that day, a couple of interviewers ask them about their motives and the president eloquently explains what she's going after, which Nyota fails to accomplish. Before they can leave, however, the tour cats led by Hayase ambush them and perform their famous TikTok dance which for some reason is popular amongst the students, which is all just a ploy to lure people into checking Naoto's art exhibit. Meki tells Hayase to bully people because that's where she's good at and working surprisingly well. As the hours go on, people flock to both their exhibits, checking out Hayase's everyday looks versus the president's ultra-revealing painting, which leaves boys satisfied and men fulfilled. Thanks to Hayase's charm, he's been trending all over the school, and even these eyeless girls are checking him out asking him to teach them how to draw. After some time, Maki tells them to grab lunch together, so he invites Hayase to eat outside. However, she's quite mad at him for getting the attention of the girls flocking to his art exhibit. But he tells her all the attention, compliments, and praises he received were thanks to her time and effort for volunteering to be his model. He knows that if he did it solo, it would have ended badly, which basically means she brought colors to his dull and monotonous life, so he's really grateful for what she did despite the constant bullying. And so for the rest of the day, they enjoy the cultural festival, checking out the various food stalls set up all over the school. However, when they go back to see who wins, a lot of people are huddled up together outside their art club. It turns out the student council deems the president's artwork to be too sensitive for high schoolers and too unsafe for the cultural festival. The student council president tells Santa that even though art is subjective, she can't just expose her melons in the most artistic way possible and call it art. However, she's going too far, and for the first time ever, Naoto steps up to defend the president's honor, stating that art has its cultural value, and it's not limited to what they perceive as the correct interpretation of it. He tells them that the president's art, despite its revealing nature, inspired him to take his art style to greater lengths, which is drawing Hayase's portraits. He believes it's very unjust to remove the president's piece just because they think it's too damn good. Hayase also steps up and tells the student council president that the painting itself is a masterpiece, with Yoshi backing them up with footage of art connoisseurs appreciating President Santa's Himalayan mountain peaks. With things finally settled, President Santa tells them she's allowed to continue, but she's giving the victory to Nodo, who's actually the one carrying the art club the entire time. As the loser, she'll have to do something for them, and it's wearing a bunny girl costume. Basically, she was blackmailed to sell merch for the girls, but she thinks this form of oppression is also a type of art. Meanwhile, the girls got the bands thanks to President Santa's unquestioning stupid maxing. After the festival, Hayase meets up with Naoto, freaking out when she thinks the president is stripping. However, she's got some profound words for them as she critiques Naoto's art, stating that every bit of it might be a little unrefined, but it's definitely filled with a lot of love. Therefore, she likes it. The announcer then tells them there's going to be a concert soon, Maki, and the rest hurry to the concert grounds. The next day, life returns to normal, and the art class survives, which means Naoto is not going to try politics. Most importantly, he gets rewarded with a genuine kiss at the end, which isn't such a bad thing after enduring the entire season getting molested and harassed by girls. After returning from holidays, Naoto cozies up in the art room and reads Slave of Love that features a loser male lead like him. Just then, the door to the art room flings open, revealing Drake's zesty little sister, Hayase. Without wasting a second, Hayase tells Nado that she got a new pair of loafers, but when Nado gives her a weak reaction, Hayase wonders if Nado has a kink like Tarantino and wants to see her feet all bare and naked. 
Suddenly, Hyacinth observes the manga in Nanto's hand and excitedly reveals how she feels a close kinship for the female protagonist of Slave of Love. Continuing with her yapping, Hyacinth confidently asserts how he will piss his pants if she forces him to reenact a scene from the manga. However, not wanting Hyacinth to think of him as a breedable twink, Nato tells him that she can do as she pleases. So without further warnings, Hyacid playfully announces that she will make him lick her shoes and then proceeds to throw water on her loafers. Since she doesn't really expect Nato to actually lick her shoes, Hyacid turns into a statue when Nato actually bends down to level with her shoe. However, since it's the start of a new semester, Nato decides to save his inner degenerate for later and just wipes the water with his handkerchief. While walking home together, Nato sees Hayaso walking ahead of him and thinks to himself if he should tease her. After a quick minute, Nato comes to the realization that if Hayaso was left in the forest with a bear, the bear would end up getting pregnant, so he decides not to provoke her. Unfortunately, all that thinking doesn't bode well for Nato as Hayaso intercepts his thoughts. With that, she begins teasing Nato by calling in Dream's twin for wanting to fondle her mosquito bites. She further torments Nato by saying that if he had money like a Saudi prince, then she might let him hit it raw. But since he's piss poor, he better stay away from her and her itty-bitty plots. Wanting to beat the allegations of him being a person that says age is just a number, Nato insists that he wasn't thinking anything funny and just wanted to sneak up and greet her. Hearing this, Hayas said he gets a wicked idea of teaching Nato how to stop being a wuss for a hot minute. However, in reality, Hayas was just looking for a reason to molest her Nato. Sensing Hayase's frontal nuts against his back, Nato's womb crusader gets fully activated causing him to tweak like a fentanyl user. After getting the reaction she wanted, Hayase urges Nato to unleash his Jeffrey Epstein on her but Nato vehemently shakes his head in disapproval. Once, Hayase realizes that she will have to once again stick to her wireless big black cucumber since Nato is too much of a wuss. She calls Nato a loser and walks ahead of him. Despite feeling emasculated, Nato decides to not do anything causing the plot god to intervene by making Nato trip and grab Hayase's bigger meatball. After freezing for a moment, Hayase and Nato are greeted by Hayase for the street's friends, Maki and Yoshi, who then invite Nato and Hayase to the TikTok wrist party. Later in the art room, Hayes begins to shiver and asks Nato to do something about the AC. Being unhelpful as always, Nato reveals that the AC is broken prompting Hayase to take out her black tights. This surprises Naoto, who admits that he thought girls do not feel cold. Hearing this absurd bullshit, Ayase states that contrary to popular beliefs, women do not have a heater lodged up in their hoo-ha, and the only reason they wear skirts is to attract a rich, depressed married man who would take them to Dubai. Understanding Hayase's hustle mindset, Naoto tells her to get the bag which gives the chocolatey demon another idea to play with Naoto's poor virgin heart. After being ordered to put on the tights for Hayase, Nato tries to divert his very erect mayonnaise cannon by imagining your fat mom. In the meantime, Hayase's cooch turns into the Niagara Falls causing her to back away from Nato. Once it's time for the TikTok wrist party, Hayase tells the girls to treat Nato with respect for one day, as he worked really hard last year. Agreeing with Hayase, the girls offer Nato their food. Noticing how Nato likes his fish, Sakura tries to raise Nato by saying that her beef curtains smell like tuna and he can always try her out. Of course, Hayase isn't the type to sit around and let someone else have her man, so she hands Nato a plate of sushi, stating that if he doesn't act right, she will get him pregnant. The entire room goes silent after hearing how Hayase would impregnate Nato, which puts Hayase in an uncomfortable position. Luckily for her, Nato digs that shit so he smiles, causing Hayase to relax and enjoy the rest of the evening. While trying to draw, Nato sighs in disappointment after realizing that his brain has started to rot ever since he started hanging with the ex gender. Suddenly, the door opens and the president walks in causing Nato to straighten his act. As Sana peers into his canvas, she blankly tells Nato to get a hoe on his PP so he can get over his artist block. Seeing Nato flinch by her words, Sana backtracks her words as she recalls what happened in Germany. So instead of discouraging Nato, Sana reminds him to keep love in his mind while making art. On that note, the president hands Nato two tickets to the zoo, stating that he needs to take inspiration from Mother Nature, since his love game is in absolute shambles. After thanking Sana for helping him touch grass, Nato asks her why she gave him two tickets. In response, the pres reveals that he might as well invite the ugly girl that's always lurking around him. Unbeknownst to both of them, Hayasu overhears their conversation and quickly pulls out her phone. After looking for advice on Reddit 
Hayase, happily enters the art room and greets her Naoto. Returning her greetings, Naoto hesitantly asks Hayase if she likes animals. Once Hayase confirms, Naoto tells her that she can always pet his trouser snake. When the low attempt of rizzing Hayase fails, Naoto puts back his balls and asks Hayase if she would like to go to the zoo with him. Smiling brightly, Hayase calls Naoto a creep but agrees to join him. The next day, Naoto arrives at the zoo, looking like a fake feminist, to get a hawk to awe. Once Hayase arrives, Naoto hands her a sketchbook and tells her that she can use it to draw animals. At that moment, Hayase realizes that Naoto didn't call her to squat on his face in the public bathroom. This upsets her so much that she gives Naoto a hard kick before walking inside the zoo. During their little date, Hayase finds Naoto deeply immersed in drawing and gets upset. Being a first-class simp, Naoto quickly notices Hayase's frown and tells her that if she's bored, he can stop and just hang out with her. However, at that moment, Hayase tells Naoto that she's going to match his freak and starts to draw with him. Seconds later, Hayase realizes she's not like the gifted child from Germany who led the Second World War and complains to Naoto for being unable to match his freak. Without looking up, Naoto tells Hayase to shut the hell up and just let him get in tune with his inner Leonardo da Vinci. Smirking mischievously, Hayase tells Naoto that she doesn't know about Leonardo da Vinci, but she can certainly help him unleash his Leonardo DiCaprio since she is below 25. Unfortunately, having nutted before their meeting, Naoto gets fed up with Hayase's constant interference and decides to help her out. After getting a hang of it, Hayase and Naoto spend the day drawing until they get tired and head to grab a quick bite. Inside the restaurant, the two compare their drawings and Hayase notes that her drawing sucks monkey balls. Agreeing with Hayase, Naoto tells her that since she's a talentless freak, she better hope her mom's happy hour take gets leaked. However, realizing that he's literally the protagonist of a romance anime, Naoto smiles and tells Hayase that one day she will get better. Hearing the words of affirmation, Hayase gets wet and excuses herself to use the bathroom. Once she's gone, Naoto is greeted by a and PC couple who appears to know Hayase. After greeting Naoto, the boy grabs his and Hayase's sketchbook and makes fun of Hayase's drawing by thanking the plot god for not giving him eyes or he would pluck them himself. This angers Naoto so much that he tells the boy that an easy drawing like him should keep his mouth shut. Now upset by the comment, the NPC dares Naoto to repeat what he said, but since it's tweaking o'clock, Naoto begins to tremble in fear. Luckily, Hayase comes out and tells the NPC that the plot god accidentally gave him a mouth and ruined a perfectly good arsehole. Seeing Hayase, the NPC couple quickly backs down, knowing that a light skin is worse than a chihuahua with rabies. As it turns out, Hayase had seen Naoto standing up for her, which in return made her protect him. Once the NPCs are gone, Hayase asks Naoto to draw a sloth while she draws him. Upon seeing Hayase's drawing, Naoto notes that while it looks ass, the drawing is certainly made with love. Finding Hayase in the art room once again, Naoto tells the girl to get a job because she's not pretty enough to make a living out of OnlyFans. Before she could retort back, Hayase gets a text from Sakura and the girls to meet up with them. Wanting to try the human centipede with the girls, Hayase tells Naoto that she will toy with him later, but for now she got places to be. Once Hayase takes her ugly ass out, Naoto notes that she has forgotten her phone. Instead of reading her DMs like a jug of chad, Naoto decides to return the phone since he's too much of a wussy. With the decision made, Naoto enters the first year's floor and realizes he's a man who just pissed in an ocean filled with really hangry sharks. After looking around for a bit, Naoto realizes that he neither knows Hayase's class or her first name. While standing in the hallway like a sus middle-aged man outside of an elementary school, Naoto wonders what he should do when a side character helps him find Hayase's classroom. However, when Naoto sees Hayase's friends coming, he ends up taking shelter in one of the cupboards. Just when he finds himself questioning his life, Naoto hears Hayase's voice and becomes curious. Without meaning to eavesdrop, Naoto hears the girls talk about how a woman should pick good-looking boyfriends since the mid-boys have become sassy after listening to Top G. The topic of conversation then switches and the girls ask Hayase what kind of boys she's into. After a momentary pause, Hayase answers that she likes insecure skinny boys that are packing down south. Of course, Naoto knows that Hayase is talking about him, so his heart starts beating faster than an American with ten chins. Suddenly the girls hear a noise coming from the cupboard and wonder if the ghosts of all the boys they traumatized are here to take revenge on them. As Hayase sees her friends scared to death, she takes out Naoto's balls from her purse and wears them. 
After wearing her protective gear, she goes to inspect the cupboard only to find Nato standing there ashamed like a child who just got caught searching women without clothes on YouTube. Before Hayase could smack the glasses out of Nato's face, he hands her the phone which prompts Hayase to sneak Nato out of the cupboard. Once the coast is clear, Hayase shyly asks Nato if he heard about her liking skinny boys with mega PP. But of course, instead of answering, Nato bolts like he has debt to pay. Later that night, Nato prepares for the annual hauling your ass for no reason day. He thinks about how this time he's going to impress Hayase with his speed and starts running when he twists his ankle. The following day, Nato joins the sprint when he's greeted by Hayase and her band of deeply troubled girlfriends. Seeing Nato run like your fat granny, Hayase tells her friends that Nato is so slow, it takes him two trips to haul ass. Then, out of nowhere, Sana appears in her bunny outfit. Seeing Sana's fun bags bounce with every step, Nato states that the recoil on them things is amazing. However, since Hayase and her friends are built like 12-year-old boys, they make it their intermission to beat Sana in the race. But since Hayase's friends are mere side characters, they cheer from afar while Hayase pushes Nato to defeat Sana. During their pursuit, Nato's sprained ankle acts up causing Hayase to let go of her desire to beat Sana. Without thinking, she grabs Nato's dainty little waist and carries him. But when the pain escalates, Hayase really pulls through by letting Nato sit on her shoulders. Upon getting a piggyback ride from Hayase, Nato smiles and tells her that as a reward, he would let her hold it when he pees. Unfortunately, on that note, Hayase's legs begin to tremble with fatigue but luckily, Hayase's friends arrive to help them continue the race. After pulling a bunch of shit that can only happen in the anime world, Nato and the girls painstakingly reach the finishing line only for the coach to tell them they're disqualified. Turns out some moves are too unconventional for the anime world as well. The next day at school when Nato finds Hayase absent from the club room, he asks Hayase's friends about her whereabouts. They inform him that she has the flu and hands him her homework so he can drop it off at her place. After school, Nato makes his way to Hayase's place, where he's greeted by Hayase's elder sister, Misaki. At first, Misaki thinks of him as a creep that goes around peeping in other people's homes, but once Nato nervously explains who he is, Misaki instantly realizes this is Hayase's Nato. After inviting Nato inside, Misaki teases him by saying that she knows he's the reason why her sister has suddenly started drinking pineapple juice. Hearing this, Nato tries to clarify that they're not bumping uglies after school, but Misaki laughs, assuring Nato that she is just joking around. After easing up a little, Nato looks around and finds the house adorned with Hayase's baby pics. This doesn't go unnoticed by Misaki, who asks Nato if he's interested in knowing more about her baby sis. Nato, like always, chickens out and says that he was just trying to find out if Hayase has been ugly since she came out of her mother's baking oven. However, knowing Nato's autistic tendencies, Nisaki presses on by asking Nato if he really doesn't want to know more about Hayase. This gives us a shitty preview of Nato's life before meeting Hayase. Of course, like every lame protagonist of a shitty romance anime, Nato wasn't interested in knowing anyone until he met Hayase, who started fulfilling his humiliation kink. Just when he's about to answer Misaki's question, Hayase walks in looking like a cotton-picking slave. After rubbing away the sleep, Hayase's eyes widen as she finds Nando sitting in her house. Once she is done freaking out, Hayase huffs in annoyance and goes to put on some makeup. In the meantime, Misaki apologizes to Nando for all the chaos, stating that her baby sis has not yet mastered the art of Ura Ura. Returning back, Hayase pretends to be upset with her sister until Misaki bribes her with a dessert. Once everyone is back to being happy-go-lucky, Misaki tells Hayase and Nato that they should sit together and discuss how to make sure Hayase doesn't end up heartbroken and pregnant. Hearing the seriousness in Misaki's voice, Nato's willy turns into a caterpillar prompting him to think that if this goes on, there won't be much baby-making to do anyways. Sensing Nato's fear, Hayase states that they will be going to her room. As Misaki tries to tag along, Hayase tells her to stop cock-blocking her. Now in Hayase's room, Nato apologizes for coming unannounced, but surprisingly, Hayase thanks him for checking on her. Feeling down bad for Nato, Hayase tries to feed Nato when suddenly, Misaki waltzes in with some juices. Of course, the young couple freeze in embarrassment, which Misaki greatly enjoys. To add fuel to the fire, Misaki tells Hayase that she got her juice so she could stay hydrated while doing cardio with her Nato. After thoroughly embarrassing her baby sis, Misaki takes her leave. Now feeling out of place, Nato tries to leave, but Hayase stops him by ordering him to play a round of match with her. Nato agrees and tells Hayase 
that after he beats her in the game, he's going to beat her cat which excites Hayase, who tells Naoto to keep up the spirit. Unfortunately to Naoto's greatest displeasure, Hayase beats the crap out of his new butt. After losing, Naoto tells Hayase that lately he has been gamaxing, so he doesn't have time to perfect his gaming skills. In response, Hayase tells Naoto to try rope maxing and finally kick the chair because he sucks in all spheres of life. However, still wanting to give Naoto a chance to rock her world, Hayase tells Naoto that if he manages to beat her in the next round, then she will tell him one of her secrets. This excites Naoto as he is desperate to slither in her chambers of secrets. As the game begins, Hayase teases Naoto by asking him if he wants to know if it do be squirting. However, in that moment, Naoto realizes that his dead granny must be watching him on Crunchyroll, so he ends up asking Hayase for her first name instead. As Naoto wins the round, Hayase proceeds to tell her first name when he stops her and says that it doesn't feel right for him to know her name just because she lost a game. After a second of silence, Hayase tells Naoto that he might as well die from the Black Death since he wants to act like he's a peasant from the medieval times. After an eventful day at Hayase's place, Naoto smiles as he thinks about how he's about to have a gooning session after having seen Hayase. The following day, Naoto is greeted by Hayase, who casually greets him. However, in that moment, Naoto recalls how Misaki used Hayase's first name and imagines himself as a risley bear that casually goes around addressing women by their first names. Seeing Naoto tweaking in the middle of the street, Hayase calls him a creep and then starts to tug on his sleeve. When Naoto expresses surprise over Hayase's behavior, the girl reveals that she read an article on how to bewitch and suck the souls out of men. Blushing abnormally, Naoto tells Hayase that her cheap tricks don't work, but the girl counters it by saying ratio plus L plus F off Gunner. However, when Hayase notices the look of death on Naoto's face, she becomes adamant on proving that she's the great Ristard and makes multiple attempts of holding Naoto's hand. In the end, Naoto is left to think that God made light skins to punish humans for their sins. Suddenly, Naoto gets an idea and tries to pull an Uno reverse on Hayase, only to end up holding hands with the little demon. Of course, Hayase's friends conveniently walk on them, compelling her to lie about what they were initially doing. Despite telling her friends that she was practicing judo moves on Nato, Hayase's friends continue to tease her by saying that she and Nato are like a pair of balls, always hanging together. The next day, Nato gets cooties after touching Hayase and decides to relax at home. Just when Nato is about to decode the formula to live a happy life, his phone begins to vibrate. Opening his phone, Nato learns that Hayase is panicking after not being able to find him in the art room. Sighing, Nato realizes that Hayase must be bored since she doesn't have anyone to toy with. However, once Hayase learns that Nato is sick, she apologizes for giving him cooties. After assuring Hayase that he'll be fine, Nato ends the call and falls asleep. A few moments later, Nato is woken by loud banging on the door. After collecting himself, he finds Hayase peeking through the window and allows her in. Seeing how Naoto has been an absolute mess, Hayase forces Naoto to take her to his room where he's going to rest for the day. Arriving at Naoto's room, Hayase asks him where he stores his jizz-filled socks causing Naoto to freak out. So in order to divert Hayase's attention, Naoto starts coughing vehemently. After letting go of her pursuits, Hayase helps Naoto get in the bed and then uses her five head to assess Naoto's condition. Throughout the day, Hayase takes care of Naoto which makes him think that you can make a wife out of a hoe after all. His belief further solidifies when Hayase announces that she is going to be cooking for him. After disappearing for a while, Hayase returns with a sick soup, but since Nato is so out of his mind, he starts to imagine Hayase as his wifu. After having the soup, Nato thanks Hayase by calling her by her first name. This makes Hayase's heart go doki doki, and she asks Nato to repeat what he said. Unfortunately, Naoto ends up falling asleep which makes Hayase so sad that she begs Naoto to wake up and call her by her name once more. Just when Hayase is about to wake her princess up with a true love's kiss, Naoto's mom returns home. The following day, Naoto steps out of his room, feeling much better than before. After greeting his mother, Naoto sits down for breakfast when his mother playfully says that before meeting Hayase last night, she thought her line would die with him. Blushing profusely, Nando leaves the house only to realize that he called Hayase by her first name. Speaking of the devil, Hayase stands in front of Nato and initiates a full-blown session of domestic abuse on him. Having received enough beating, Nato holds up Hayase's leg when Hayase's friends catch the two in the act. When they ask Hayase and Nato 
if they are about to remake Fifty Shades of Grey, Hayase counters the allegations by pulling an ankle block on Nato. With Christmas right around the corner, Hayase asks Misaki what would make a perfect gift. Knowing who the present is for, Misaki teases her sister by saying that she can just wrap herself in a gift paper and let Naoto ravish her. Flustered, Hayase states that she's going for a subtle gift this time. After a minute, Misaki advises her to get something consumable like snacks, bath salts, or perhaps some chocolate-flavored baby stoppers. Just when Hayase thanks her sister for the help, Misaki tells her that she can always give Naoto her life-size blow-up doll. In the meantime, Naoto dreams about giving Hayas the perfect Christmas gift and right when she's about to give him the Christmas quack quack. Naoto's alarm goes off, sighing Naoto faps and goes to school where he's greeted by Hayase, who is super excited about Christmas Eve. Seeing her all riled up, Naoto finds Hayase looking like a chihuahua on coke. Feeling turned off, Naoto wonders if he should just hand Hayase her gift here and then book a trip to Afghanistan so he never has to see her again. But before he could put his thoughts into action, Naoto and Hayase are greeted by Hayase's gang who tells them to join their meeting. Meiki starts off by saying that there are two kinds of women in this world, one that has boyfriends and the second group has cucumbers. Continuing on, Maki reveals she's announcing an all-night karaoke session for those who won't be getting laid. Hearing this, Naoto thinks to himself that he won't get a chance to give Hayase her present if he joins Maki and her group. Suddenly, Hayase's friends ask her about her plans wondering if she would spend the eve with Nato. However, since Hayase can't express her true feelings until we're right at the end of this shitty story, she states that Nato is just a toy for her. Seeing how Hayase is stalling, Maki presses on, causing her to run off with Nato. Inside the arts room, Nato and Hayase close the gap between them and are about to exchange presents when Sana walks in butt naked. Before Nato can get distracted by the president's bazookas, Hayase forces him to leave. After all the running, Nato takes Hayase to the nurse's office, where he is about to seize the day when they hear Sakura ready to molest her boyfriend. Not wanting to be props in another couple's happy time, Hayase and Nato rush out. Arriving at the rooftop, Hayase and Nato now find themselves in a full-blown orgy. Finally realizing why there are too many teen pregnancies, Hayase asks Nato if he wants to leave and just when Nato is about to chicken out, he sees how beautiful Hayase looks under the sunset and decides to give her the present. Unwrapping the gift, Hayase finds out that Nato has given her a scarf, and turns out she too has picked a scarf for Nato. After the eventful day, Nato relaxes with his family when he gets a call from Hayase asking him if he is going to visit the shrine on New Year's. When Nato reveals that he hasn't gone to the shrine since he was a kid, Hayase says that she already knew since Nato is the type to laze around and sleep all day. Hearing this, Nato's knickers get in a twist prompting him to state that he will go this year. With her mission accomplished, Hayase disconnects the call. The next morning, Nato heads to the shrine where he finds Hayase dressed in a traditional outfit. She reveals that she took a job at the shrine and asks Nato if he likes her fit. After observing her, Nato states that just because she's wearing traditional clothes doesn't mean she is not a 304 woman. Pouting, Hayase tells him to watch less Alpha Bro podcasts or else will end up married to his right hand. After teasing Nato relentlessly, Hayase tells him to check his fortune. As Nato does so, he reads that while his lucky stars have taken a permanent vacation, he might get into a relationship if he takes action. With that thought in mind, Nato mans up and nervously tells Hayase that he will wait for her until she is done with her shift. After 20 minutes, Hayase arrives and teases Nato for sounding so needy and bitchless. Shrugging away the insult, Naoto nervously asks Hayase if she would like to visit the shrine together to which she agrees. After a while, Naoto realizes that they're in a matchmaking shrine. Seeing Naoto so surprised, Hayase teases him by saying that he better pray to the gods if he wants to go out with her. Seizing the moment, Naoto hits Hayase with a poetic reese, stating that if he wants to go out with her, he won't need any divine intervention to woo her. At school, Hayase once again waltzes right into the arts room and sees Nato painting. Suddenly, her prying eyes take notice of the contact lenses next to Nato. Without wasting a moment, Hayase tells Nato that lenses won't help him glow up, and he would actually need to sacrifice hundred virgins to become a Jago Chad. After a lot of teasing, Hayase urges Nato to try the contact lenses, but Nato begins to hesitate. Annoyed by his behavior, Hayase warns Nato that she will kick him where the sun doesn't shine, so he better wear those damn contacts. However, when Nado still appears squeamish, 
Hideste tells him that she used to help her brother wear contacts too and can assist him if he likes. Despite knowing that Hayase is the worst person on earth for this job, Naoto ends up trusting her. During the process, Naoto makes a lot of happy noises and struggles against Hayase. But thankfully in the end, Hayase manages to conquer Naoto's eyeballs. After having the contacts inside his eyes, Naoto takes in Hayase's appearance which makes him pitch a tent. Things further get heated for Naoto when he sees Hayase wearing his old glasses, causing his PP to turn into a whole cock casuars. Of course, like always, Hayase instantly finds out what Nato is cooking in his head and starts to tease him mercilessly. After all that teasing, Nato, Hayase, and her girls visit a ski resort where the boys look at the girls with envy as they ski like pros. Since Nato is a certified loser, all he does is make scenarios where he's a chad that impresses Hayase out of her panties. However, this time, Nato decides to make his daydreams come true, so he begins to practice with his homies. That is until Hayase approaches them and asks Nato if he would like to ditch his friends and ski with her instead. Since the Brotherhood understands Kuchi over bros, Nato's friends allow him to go with Hayase. Once everything is all set, Hayase guides Nato and urges him to try what she taught her. But Nato being Nato, fails miserably on the first attempt. After a lot of failed attempts, Nato sits down to rest when suddenly he and Hayase find Hayase's friends skiing away in the snow. In that moment, Nato realizes that he's a dead weight and should let Hayase have her fun at least. Later that night, when Hayase invites Nato to come with her for round two of skiing, he turns her down, stating that his leg is hurt. Feeling slightly hurt, Hayase leaves with her friends while Nato's friends ask him if he's sure about blowing off a baddie like Hayase. In response, Nato states that if only the situation had been the other way around and Hayase had wanted to blow him off, then he wouldn't feel like a sore loser. Suddenly, Hayase's ugly friends, Maki and Sakura, appear in front of Nato and ask Nato if he really wants to leave Hayase on her own. In the end, Nato admits that he would just be slowing down Hayase. Maki agrees and reveals that Hayase is really good at skiing. Nato waits for Maki and Sakura to say something more meaningful, but when they disappear, he curses the girls and heads out to practice. While trying to perfect his skiing skills, Naoto prays about having one moment where he comes out looking like a jagged chad with a humongous PP. After screwing Naoto multiple times, the plot god finally accepts Naoto's prayer and sends in a helpless NPC that is about to crash into a tree. Without thinking, Naoto hurries and saves the boy, automatically going from zero to hero. And to add Sherry on top, Hayasu witnesses Naoto's heroic moment and decides to help him improve his skiing skills. After spending the whole night training Naoto, Hayase tells her friends to watch Nato as he skies away. To everyone's surprise, Nato collides with a snow wall. In that moment, Nato regrets wasting his Chad moment on a faceless brat. After arriving from the ski resort, Nato learns that Sana has been accepted by art school. This makes him happy as humankind just got saved from World War III. Smiling slightly, Sana asks Nato if he has any future plans or does he plan on ending up as a penniless SoundCloud rapper. When Nato reveals that he also wants to apply for art school, Sana smiles and says that she's proud of him for still being focused on his shit. After talking to Sana, Nato finds himself wondering about what Hayase wants to do with her life. It then clicks to him that other than Hayase's guide size, he knows nothing about her. With the art club's shelves overflowing with paintings, Hayase suggests to Nato that they try selling some at an auction. However, Nato replies that since he has both of his ears intact, and no tragic lore, no one would take his painting seriously. At first, Hayas agrees, but when she finds one of the president's nude self-paintings, she points out how somebody's husband would easily pay a buttload of money to see a teenager in all her glory. Later, Nato tries to draw, but fails to find inspiration in the world around him. After a moment of hesitation, he asks Hayasa to be his model since she looks easy to draw. At first, Hayasa pretends to be busy, wanting Nato to beg her. But eventually, she agrees and asks what pose he wants her to take. As Nato tells her to assume a pose in which she feels herself, Hayase cycles through a series of stances from Muay Thai, boxing, and capoeira. However, Nato remains agitated as he doesn't find what he is looking for. Frustrated, Hayase turns to leave when Nato asks her English or Spanish. Just English or Spanish? Now frozen in a spot, Nando announces that he wants her to maintain this pose for a while and with that, he starts to draw Hayase. As the painting progresses, Nando and Hayase exchange several glances, which gets pervy Nando all riled up. 
Once the drawing is completed and Nando is pleased with his work, he asks Hayase to come and critique his work. Without thinking, Hayase tells Nando that he is a total creep for looking at her so much during the drawing process and then grabs him in a chokehold. Suddenly in comes Hayase's friends, Sakura, Maki, and Yoshi, who joke about how Nando and Hayase are always flirting. Meanwhile, Nando clings on to dear life as Hayase continues to suck the life out of him, and not even in a fun way. During their conversation, Maki stares at the canvas and says something cryptic to Hayase which confuses Nado. However, when he tries to ask Hayase, she sticks her tongue and storms out of the room. Later during judo class, Nado gets his ass handed by a NPC which prompts him to think about how if Hayase was here, she would totally make him wear a maid outfit and then make him call her mommy. Suddenly, Nado's eyes shift to the vent beside him and he discovers Hayase staring daggers at him. The gym teacher then hands the class some flyers about a judo tournament, which strangely makes Hayase pale, causing her to take off early. That afternoon, Maki and Yoshi burst into the art room to ask Hayase if she wants to join the tournament. But when Nando informs the two Uggos about how Hayase ran off after seeing the flyer, the girls sign and then reveal the whole story to Nando. Turns out, Maki has a fighting gym where Hayase actively participates in judo training. After telling the full lore to Nando, Maki tells him to join her gym, where she will help him become a muscle god, which will help him get his own anime, where he gets to teach cute teen girls on how to lift weights. Feeling excited about transforming into a macho muscle god, Nado visits the gym and finds Hayase sparring with Maki. After getting KO'd, Hayase greets Nado and wonders what his TikTok-making ass is doing in a judo training gym. Despite feeling out of place, Nado admits that he wants her to train him so he can perform better in the upcoming judo tournament. Without uttering a word, Hayase leaves the training room. Just when Nado is about to go emo mode, Hayase returns with a judo uniform and sternly tells Nado that he better work hard or else she'll whip his ass. Gulping down the anxiety, Nado spends the day training with Hayase and quickly learns that her future husband will be calling Hayase daddy in bed. After an intense day of training, Nado curiously asks Hayase if she did judo before. She then reveals that while she did do judo, she felt like a loser after being unable to beat some people. Hearing this, Nado tries to cheer Hayase up by saying she's not a loser anymore, but the girl firmly tells Nado that she won't be participating in the judo tournament at any cost. On the day of the judo tournament, Nado keeps Hayase in his mind and diligently trains at home. After a lot of stretches, Nado goes to school where he learns that Hayase has decided to perform in the tournament. This makes him happy as he sees Hayase win the first round while her friends fail to put up a good fight. Once Maki is defeated by a girl named Orihara, Hayase becomes rather tense. Turns out, Orihara represents Japan in judo tournaments, which automatically makes her a worthy opponent. And knowing she will be fighting Orihara, Hayase asks her friends that perhaps she should forfeit the match. However, her friends quickly remind her that Naoto likes strong independent women, so she better bring her a game. Maki further adds that since Nando has a potential of being an emo school shooter, she better impress him by knocking Orihara. Speaking of the devil, Orihara approaches Hayase and casually tells her that she can't wait to beat her ass in the ring. Now feeling rather burdened, Hayase steps out to clear her head when Nando comes to check up on her. Nando tells Hayase that her opponent seems quite strong to which Hayase agrees but says it wasn't always like this. Confused, Nando tries to get to know more which prompts Hayase to finally open up. As it turns out, Hayasa has been doing judo since she was a kid and was even in the same gym as Orihara. Since Hayasa had the raw talent for judo, she would enjoy beating the living shit out of Orihara until one day, the side character surpassed her and violated her in a match. It was then, when she suddenly lost all motivation to do judo and completely gave up on it. After completing her story, Hayasa shrugs and says that since Orihara represents Japan in tournaments, she might as well just lose and get it over with. However, Nado doesn't accept Hayasa having an easy way out. So he tells her that this doesn't sound like the girl that made his life so hellish, that he had to resort to using coloring books for his anxiety. Seeing how Nanto is judging her for being a cowardly wuss, Hayasa's face darkens, and she quickly tells Nado to stay in his lane. But for the first time, Nado decides to speak his mind and urges Hayasa to do her best despite who is standing in front of her. After sensing the care behind Nando's words, Hayase tells him that if he manages to win at least one match, then she will try and do her best. Hearing this, Nando starts to tweak and tries to tell Hayase that this is not about him. It's about her but the girl mocks Nando for giving a TED talk, 
without practicing what he preaches. In the end, Hyacinth sweetens the deal by telling Nato, if he wins at least once, then she will ravish his virgin lips. Despite wanting to haul his ass out of the door, Nato recalls all the training he did with Hayasa and decides to show what he's made of. When it's time for his match, Nato faces a boy with bouncing pecs which ignites fear in his heart. Yet despite being manhandled and roughly thrown on the ground, Nato remembers the moves he practiced under Hayasa's guidance and puts up a good fight. Unfortunately, in the end, Nato's opponent manages to win by referee discretion. At first, Nato thinks he's in trouble, but when he sees Hayase tying her hair into a ponytail, he realizes he is about to feel like Jeff Bezos later that night. Now facing Orihara, Hayase gives her best effort against the pro. As the entire gym cheers for Orihara, Nato's voice rises above the rest, passionately cheering for Hayase and overshadowing every other chant. With Renato's support, Hayase is about to win the match when time runs out, causing Orihara to win by referee's discretion. However, this doesn't dull her spirits as Hayase regains her determination to continue judo. Once the tournament is over, Hayase tells Nando that when she finally beats Orihara, she expects a kiss from him. But knowing Hayase, Nando assumes she is joking until Hayase tells him that she is serious about getting a smooch from him. Sitting in front of his canvas, Nando prepares to draw an oil painting when Hayase walks in. Seeing the hood rat, Nando recalls their last conversation when Hayase asked him for a kiss. Instead of feeling excited, Nato is left feeling conflicted as he still thinks Hayase is just pulling his leg. Seeing Nato deep in his thoughts, Hayase teases him to stop living in his daydreams and reminds him that he's a senior now and should act accordingly. Her attention then turns towards the blank canvas, which gives Hayase a new topic to tease Nato on. She asks Nato if he was waiting for her to model naked for him, and when Nato affirms, Hayase reveals that she has something better in mind. After running into the closest, Hayase returns wearing her fatherless swimsuit. With that, Hayase tells Nando to draw her like one of his French girls. Despite wanting to hold his tiny brush and paint the world with his white sauce, Nando manages to control his excitement and dives into his art. While painting Hayase, Nando finds himself once again thinking about kissing her. To calm himself, Nando takes a five when Hayase asks him to give her a back massage. Startled by the request, Nando tells Hayase, that massages usually end with the girl getting pregnant. In response, Hayase tells him to stop going incognito mode every night. After a lot of drama from Hayase's end, Nato caves and gives her a massage. Of course, during every hand movement, Hayase makes a lot of voices, which clearly indicates she's a cat in heat. After getting what she needs, Hayase tells Nato about how she has joined the judo club since she wants to beat Orihara and get her kiss. Surprised by this, Nato asks her if she is really serious or just messing with his head. To which, Hayase replies by asking Nato if he wants to kiss her or not. Just when Nato is about to answer, the door opens revealing a girl who tells Nato she is here to join the arts club. After allowing Hana inside, Nato informs Hayase that Hana and him go way back. Hearing this, Hana reveals how her cousin, Sana, recommended her to join the club. As the conversation progresses on, Hayase learns that Nato personally taught Hana how to draw, which makes her twitch from inside. But what breaks the camel's back is when she sees Nato smiling at Hana. After getting a death glare from Hayase, Nato straightens his act until Hana asks him to introduce Hayase. Like always, Nato fumbles the introduction big time and makes Hayase look like his side chick. However, seeing the two interact, Hana asks if they're in a relationship. When Nato denies, Hana wonders if Hayase is a member of the arts club. Nando once again says no which makes Hana come to the conclusion that the two of them will be alone. This upsets Hayase, who tries to tell Hana to back off by revealing how Nato has the habit of behaving like a 4chan user. However, to Hayase's greatest displeasure, Hana reveals that she loves her men a bit creepy. Suddenly, the door opens and Maki walks in. She tells Hayase how they have to leave early for their first day at the judo club. Understanding that it's a big deal for Hayase, Nato wishes her good luck and shifts his attention to welcoming Hana. Noticing Hayase's saddened expression and Nato's shifted focus, Maki instantly realizes what's up. To lighten the mood, Maki loudly asks if Nato bounced to another girl. Of course, her plan epically fails because now Nato freaks out and assures Hayase that he just wants to make sure Hana adjusts well. However, despite Nato's assurance, Hayase leaves the room with a slight frown on her face. Once alone with Hana, Nando gets told how his art seems more lively than before. While this comes as a shock to him, Hannah states that it's all because Hayase rocked his world. 
In the meantime, Maki and Orihara team up to tease Hayase about her interest in Nano. Maki informs Orihara how Hayase is upset because a new competitor has arrived. And since she has some great pair of honkers, Hayase is worried Nato will forget all about her mosquito bites. After being toyed with, Hayase loudly announces that when she is at the judo club, she is going to train with her all night, but this won't stop her from pursuing and toying with Nato. Meanwhile, back at the arts club, Hannah tells Nato that since Hayase will be busy with judo practice, he must save his love by going on a date with her. Hearing the word date, Nato imagines hanging out with Hayase by the beach where they end the day by kissing under the sunset. However, once the daydream ends, Nato shakes his head vehemently and says that if he were to ask Hayase out, she would just dismiss him by calling him a pathetic creep. In response to Nato's freak out, Hannah sighs and tells Nato to figure shit out on his own. After apologizing to Hannah, Nato walks her out when Sana arrives on the bike with her titties hanging out. Seeing Nato, Sana instantly picks up that something is wrong with him. When she tries to inquire, Nato remains quiet, but Hana quickly tells her cousin how Hayaset and Nato are at the brink of falling apart. After a momentary pause, Sana tells Naoto to set his heart ablaze. Naoto quickly tells Sana that this isn't Demon Slayer and to chill the F out. Once Hana and Sana take off in the night, Naoto realizes what Sana really meant and decides to walk home with Hayase. After seeing Naoto waiting on her, Hayase teases him relentlessly but expresses how she is sad since she won't get to toy him that much. Meanwhile, Nato thanks his ancestor for saving orphans because now he will get to relax. However, knowing that Hayase misses him, Nato asks her if there is some place she would like to go. When Hayase tells Nato she would like to go to Mount Everest, Nato imagines dying without ever getting to hit it. Sighing, Nato asks her to pick another place, and when she picks Mariana Trench, Nato tells Hayase that he would rather dive in her deep trench. Feeling frustrated, Hayase tells Nato to pick a place himself. So keeping Hayase's personality in mind, Nato suggests going to see dogfights. This, of course, earns him a slap and rightfully so. In the end, the two are unable to find a spot to hang out and end up parting ways for the night or so, Hayase thinks. Moments later, Nato comes running towards her and asks if she would like to visit the aquarium with him. After dogging Nato and making him re-ask, Hayase smiles and tells Nato that she would love to see the fishes with him. The following day, both Hayase and Nato are out of their wits. Seeing the constipated look on Nato, Hannah asks him if he's okay. When Nato reveals about what happened last night, Hannah congratulates him by saying Nato is a symbol of hope for all the lonely unpopular losers out there. Nato smiles but tells her that it's not a big deal since he is just going to be hanging out with Hayase. In the meantime, Hayase is totally tweaking without Nato, so her friends suggest visiting the art room, but to their surprise, Hayase tells them that she is not going to see Nato today. This scares both Yoshi and Maki who note that Hayase seems like she wants to play with her food and then go in with that killing blow. After using too much of her brain, Maki reaches the conclusion that Hayase is after Nato's B card. Worried that their friend will end up going to jail where she's going to be some butch's prison bay, Maki and Yoshi run to warn Nato. But this begs the question, does Nato even want to be saved? Arriving at the arts room, the girls are acquainted with Hannah's since Nato is nowhere to be found. Seeing Yoshi and Maki in the flesh, Hannah instantly realizes that they are Hayase's fellow Bob friends. After learning that Nato is out buying supplies, Yoshi and Maki combine heads and reach the conclusion that they must oversee Nato and Hayase's date. Unfortunately, Hannah hears their little group discussion and comes to an understatement that the girls are trying to cock-block Nato. The following day, Nato meets up with Hayase and unbeknownst to them, Yashi and Maki are on a mission to protect his virginity while Sana and Hannah are there to make sure he gets a very well-deserved gawk gawk. Upon taking the train, Hayase playfully tells Nato that she will be grading him on his every move, so when he actually has a girl, he knows exactly how to act. Meanwhile, Maki and Yoshi observe the unsuspecting couple from afar and note how Hayase is ready to climb Nato's K2. So in order to keep Hayase away from Nato's BP, the girls decide to take embarrassing pictures of them so they can stay in their senses. But what they don't know is how the Sonomiya cousins have a mission of their own. After arriving at the aquarium, Yoshi and Maki end up losing sight of their targets, while Nado realizes that even though there are plenty of fish in the sea, they all mid as hell. Seeing other couples holding hands, Hayasta hints that Nado should be doing something similar. Of course, Nado fails to realize what Hayasta wants, but then he notices their friends following them which prompts him to flee the scene while holding Hayas's hand in his. 
While Hayas is happy seeing Nato man up, Maki and Yasha realize that Naoto is onto them and decide to chase after him when Sana and Hana block their path. After a lot of bickering, Maki and Yoshi end up making a tactical escape. Having escaped their pursuers, Hayase and Naoto visit an ice cream shop inside the aquarium. Naoto gets a normal cream ice cream, while Hayase opts for a wasabi flavored one. She offers Naoto a bite, causing him to worry about the indirect kiss and refusing with the excuse that he isn't good with spicy food. When Hayase teases that she'll lick his cone, Naoto and his cooter shooter start to panic. After teasing Nato a lot, Nato and Hayase find themselves by the beach, where Hayase tells Nato that this wasn't a dry run for her causing Nato to admit that he wasn't using her as a practice either. From a distance, Maki and Yoshi spot them and prepare to intervene. However, Yoshi stops Maki, saying that it's time for them to let Hayase yoink up Nato's babies. Maki smiles kindly and admits it would be fun to see Nato and Hayase's love unfold from afar. Meanwhile, Hayase gives Nato two options to make it feel more like a real date, hugging or kissing. Embarrassed, Nato chooses hugging, but just as they're about to touch, the Sonomiya cousins accidentally chase Maki and Yoshi onto the scene, ruining the moment. The intruders tell them to continue like they aren't there, but out of embarrassment, Hayase claims she's merely practicing a judo move on Nato. The next day, Hayase sulks at Maki and Yoshi for ruining the date and ignores them at school while they whimper like lonely puppies. Sakura steps in as a peacemaker, explaining that the girls didn't mean any harm. Feeling merciful, Hayase ends up forgiving her friends. Later, the girls find Hana feeding Nato, a bento she made as an apology for interrupting his date with Hayase. Hearing Hana's plan to make bento for Nato all week, Hayase gets jealous and offers to make one for him tomorrow. Nato refuses, saying she has morning training, and it would be too much trouble if she spends the evening cooking. Disheartened, Hayas agrees, while the girls watch Nato and accuse him of making a mess again. Instead of hearing the side characters, Nato tells Hayase he'd love her bento if she'd accept one from him, which she joyfully agrees to. Later that day, while walking home, Hayase asks Nato if he wants to finish what they started. This gives Nato to embrace Hayase, who lovingly calls Nato a mega creep. Do you want a love life that makes you wish for an early death like Nato here? Let us know by commenting I love getting bullied by hot girls. And if you like anime recaps, then watch this video.